Okay, uh, let me see if I can pull this off. I'm using a tripod here, which is something that I don't usually do. Um, anyhow, there's a scale. There's what I'm calling a pod or floater. There's a jar lid. And there's a jug of water. And uh, so, and what I've tried to do is I've tried to get the water level exactly to that uh, mark there. And so, reading the bottom of the meniscus, I've got it set as uh, as accurately as possible on that black line that I've drawn along there. Okay. So that's the starting amount of water. That's the jar, and that's the scale. So now let's get some some base weights. Okay, let's uh, turn the scale on. Okay, and now let's just weigh the floater by itself. 25 grams. I better write that down. Okay, so the floater is 25 grams. And the lid and the float rod I could call it thirty four grams, thirty four grams. So putting those together then should be 59 grams, right? Let's see. Screw those together. Like that. And 58. 58 grams for that screwed together. Okay. And so we'll set that aside. Now we'll weigh the green jug by itself, and that's 977, 977, right? Okay, and uh, we know where the water level is in there. So now what I'm going to do is uh, We'll remove it from the scale first. Okay. And then we'll assemble it. And uh, we, uh, let me show you how this works. Um, so I've got a, a, a stop nut on there so that the floater can float up against the loop and be restrained up against the lid there. So that's internally restrained. Then I can also push down on it from above and uh, have it independent from the jar and container. So that's externally restrained and that's the two conditions that we're going to be testing. This black tube here is just so that I can fine adjust the water level and then there's a vent and a plug. Vent and plug. And so I'll be pushing down from outside on this rod, okay, but for now we'll just assemble the thing and I know that the water is not going to overflow because I've done this before, you can see that the water level comes up to about there and of course it's vented so there won't be any pressure uh, building up inside the jar. Alright, so there we go and let's check to make sure that uh, the floater, the pod is not touching the bottom and it's restrained internally by the nut hitting the lid up on, up on there. So now let's weigh this whole thing. Um, scale turned itself off, so turn it back on. Okay, so now let's weigh that whole thing. And that says. 1035 actually. Can you read that? 1035. Okay, 
So let me write that down. 10.35. Okay. Uh, change the tripod view a little bit. Okay, so now you can see the scale indication. And now what I'm going to do is uh, push down on the top of the rod here to free the floater from its internal restraint. And I'll try to do it without placing any drag on the, on the bushing, if I can. All right, so here we go. Pushing down. Yeah, there. Okay, now I'm trying to do this without dragging the bushing so that I'm either pushing down or up on the jar itself, just on the floater. And when I manage to do that, we see about 12.30 or so. And when I release it, we see 10.35. When I'm pushing down, we see 12, 12.30 or so, somewhere in that range. If I can do it without hitting the bushing too much, 12.25, 12.30, and then release. Okay, so I'm adding something like 200 grams of downward force when I'm pushing. All I'm doing is just pushing on the top rod here like this. And I'm trying to find a position where I'm not dragging the bushing and I'm not pushing down, I'm just pushing down a little bit. So we're not getting any rise in the water level inside except for the slight tiny little bit added from the displacement of the rod length that's going in there. And I'm not pushing down, so all I'm doing is just pushing to make the floater free from its internal restraint. And then now it's internally restrained. So there's a difference there, okay. So now, we're back to 1035, because I'm not doing anything. So now what I'm going to do is uh, take some of that water out. If I can do it without making a huge mess. take some of the water out so that when the floater is submerged we're back to the same line that we were when we started with. take out a little bit more so that's what the suction tubes for okay that's about right right there as close as I can figure it to being back to the meniscus line okay so now let's see what this weighs Okay, so we're internally restrained. Whoops, forgot to turn the scale on. Sorry, take it back off again. Turn the scale on. It's a power saving feature, I guess. And then put this back in place. Okay, 814. That's internally restrained with the displacer displacing and the water level at the same level as it was when we first started with no displacer in place. Now I'm going to do the pushing down on the top thing again. Okay. And when 
I do it without friction in the bushing, which is not that easy to do, I get a little bit over a thousand grams. Call it well, call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it about 1007 or 1008, something like that. Let's do it again. Ten oh four to ten oh eight. Let's call it ten oh five. Okay, so again, you get about a two hundred gram increase from freeing up the pod and, and restraining it externally. Okay. And that, I think, is the inverted Travis effect, and it's very interesting to me to see that happen. The thing is completely submerged. All I'm doing is submerging just a little bit more of it by pushing it down, so the water level doesn't rise. It rises a fraction just because we're submerging more of those nuts. but the weight changes by 200 grams, almost, okay. And it just so happens that that 200 milliliters, or 200 grams of water, as you might expect, is the volume of this whole container. That's what the water, that's what this displaces. The pod, the floating pod, is about 200, slightly over 200 milliliters of displacement. Okay, so now you have some numbers to mull over. Thank you for watching.